Hello, my front porch friend. Well, I am back here way in the back pasture today, out by the creek down here, kind of in the woods. It's just so pretty. I wish you was out here with me. But I'm just finding the, the neatest stuff out here. I'm having to, it's so wooded, I'm kind of having to walk around and make sure I don't step on any snakes or varmints that are out here. But I found some of the neatest stuff. And I found this one thing. I have to show it to you because it reminded me of a story. I, I, I've just got to tell you. So let me crawl, let me climb back up this hill because I've got to show you what I found. It was on this big tree right here. And right on this side, the back side of this tree, let me find it. It's right here. Can you see it? Look right here. Coming out of this tree is an old rusted bob wire. You know what bob wire is, don't you? It's got the little sticky prongs on it. And uh, it was, it's, it's been here so many years that literally it's growing. It's coming out of the tree now. It's growing in, out of the tree which tells me probably some of my family many, many years before I was born, when this tree was very young, they probably wrapped it around it. And now it's been here so long, it's literally become part of the tree coming out of it. But it reminded me of a story that I used to just love to have my Aunt May tell me. And my Aunt May, well, she was actually my cousin. Uh, we shared a grandmother. We shared Grandma Lolly. Y'all have all heard me talk about Grandma Lolly, my great-grandmother. She was known in this area as a woman of, of great faith and a woman of prayer. She just had a profound impact on her children and her grandchildren and now, all of, and her, now her great-grandchildren. She's long been with the Lord. But my Aunt May, as we called her, was also impacted by Grandma Lolly. And Aunt May was, oh, she was a powerful woman of God. Who now you couldn't even, if you, if you ran into Aunt May at the grocery store, if you ran into Aunt May, I mean, at Walmart, it didn't matter where she was. If you, all you got to do is just mention the Lord. You didn't even have to mention it. She would. And she'd just start shouting right there in the aisle. She just, oh, she didn't care what anybody thought. She was just one of my favorite people. But she would tell the, she had so many stories, Lord have mercy, mercy, the testimony of the miracles that she saw God do all of her life. But this was one of my favorites. When I was a little girl, I used to tell her, Aunt May, tell me that story about the Bob wire. So she'd go into her story. I wish you could hear her tell it instead of me because when she would tell it, you know, she told it with her, with the passion of her heart. And then also it added that rich Southern accent that just made it all the more wonderful. And she'd, she'd start just going to telling me, oh, she'd say, I was, I was, when she was, a, she, I was a young girl and I was out in the pasture. I was by myself. There wasn't nobody with me. Wasn't never so with me. I was, a, I was out there by myself and I was, I was a running through the pasture. She'd say, I was a running and I didn't know. I didn't know that right down low to the ground, it was low to the ground, was a barbed wire fence. Now she meant barbed wire, but you know, for those of you that don't speak Southern, it's barbed wire, but for her, it was barbed wire. She said, low to the ground, it was a barbed wire fence. She said, I didn't know it, and I was running, and I hit that barbed wire fence, and it went right in my leg. It went clear to the bone. It went clear to the bone. She said, I was laying there on the ground all by myself. There wasn't nobody around. And she said, I was laying there, and I was looking up at the sky. And she said, and all of a sudden, lying there on the ground with that barbed wire, clear to the bone. She said, I looked up at the sky. And she said, with all of my heart and all my voice, I shouted, where is the God of Abraham? And where is the God of Isaac? And where is the God of Grandma Lolly? And she said, and all of a sudden, it was as though somebody took that bob wire and they just popped it out of my leg. <laughs> and then she'd go to shouting. And there's a little girl, and now as a grown woman, that story still stirs my faith to remember what Psalms 46 tells us, that God is our refuge and our strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. And some of you are in trouble tonight. And the God of Abraham and Isaac and Grandma Lolly is your God. And that's why I tell you often, Jeremiah 33, 3, that tells you, if you call on him, he will answer you. 
That's the word I've heard for you today. I heard these words as though from the Lord. It's time to pray. It is time, my friend, to just have a stirring of faith in us and in you and in me too. I felt it all day long. A drawing to prayer. I know we pray already, but I'm talking about increased prayer. Our nation is in trouble. Our families are in trouble. But God, when we pray, it changes things. So I want to encourage you today. In fact, it was so strong. Look here, I built myself a pulpit out here just for you. I've been out here. I've written some notes because I was hearing some things from the Lord I had to share with you. So I found a rock. And that's, that's just going to be, that's going to be where I'm going to give you this word from. But, but I'm, I mean this, and I want you to listen up. And if you know a friend, send this to them. I believe this is your word. The Lord calls us to this. And in fact, I want you to listen to this one thing that so impacted my life. I heard this a few years ago, and I've never gotten over it. I don't ever want to get over it. It was something John Wesley said. He said, listen to it carefully. God does nothing in the earth except in response to prayer. Think about it. I think about that pretty much every day, that statement. God does nothing in the earth except in response to prayer. Because I remember the first time I heard it, I didn't, I didn't know if I agreed with it. Because I thought, I don't know if I, you know, God does nothing in the earth except in response to prayer. I mean, he's God. He can do anything he wants. Then I began to realize the reason I didn't like it, because I don't like the responsibility that puts on me. But the truth is, if you read the Bible, it's all through the Bible. God waits until people pray. And when people pray, they see breakthrough. They see miracles. That's why in Matthew 18, 18, Jesus said it. Please listen. He said, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's so powerful, it's hard to comprehend that heaven waits for us to move first on the earth. Whatever you bind on earth, we bind first on earth and then it's bound in heaven. We, bind, we loose first on earth and then it's loosed from heaven. In other words, we pray first, we seek God first, and then it is released from heaven. In other words, my friend, this is what the Lord told me to tell you today. When you pray, it matters. And when you don't pray, it matters. This is the word of the Lord for you. Ignore my dog. He's probably going to bark the whole time. But I'm, this is so strong, I'm not stopping. I felt to tell you, listen, it's nice to have other people pray with you. I, I tell you all the time to comment below, and I want you to comment today. Because it is powerful when people pray together. But, but I want to encourage you today. You pray. Increase prayer. Pray like you've never prayed in your life. Because let me tell you something. Nobody can pray for your family like you can. Nobody is going to pray for your money or your marriage or your prodigal child like you can pray. Because nobody, number one... It's, it's in your sphere of influence that God's given you and God has given you and me the responsibility to pray over what he's called us to steward over. I know something happens whenever we begin to pray for those that we love. I mean, other people can pray and it matters, but they don't love like we love. And when you're motivated by love, you'll pray different. When you've got a prodigal child, I remember... <laughs> When my daughters even were younger, it's probably still this way, to tell you the truth. I always used to say, when it comes to my kids and somebody messing with my kids and treating my kids wrong, the only way I know to put it is this, there's this other woman that lives in me. I, I mean, I consider myself to be nice and I mean, I try to be, I want to be, certainly not perfect, but I try to be, I want to be kind to everybody. But when somebody messes with my kids, some of you mothers watching me right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When somebody, mess, I remember years ago when Lauren, my oldest daughter, was playing volleyball. I'm a little ashamed to tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. She was playing volleyball, and I know she wasn't the best volleyball player, maybe out on the court by no means. It wasn't exactly her gift. 
but she it meant a lot to her and she was and I was on the stands up there as you know how we are as mothers we're on the stands ready to yell and cheer and shout but Lauren was never being allowed to play and when she was allowed to play <clears throat> she was out there for like for seconds and taken off the court and I've been watching this game after game after game and, and I just I was done I just one one night I saw how the coach treated her I was just over it and after this game was over the other mother came out the other woman I don't know what happened. I just know I was ready to meet that coach, and I met her. Now, I didn't sin. I didn't say any bad words. But the Bible does say sometimes be angry and sin not. I was angry. I said a lot. I said a lot. But I talked to that woman. I don't even know what all I said. It was definitely the other woman. I followed her. That woman started walking to get away from me. I followed her. I followed her all the way down the hall. I followed her out the door, and my mouth was still going. I followed her to her car. I can't believe I did this. I followed her to her car. I followed her, and she, I was still going. My mouth was still going, just going, until finally she just shut the door in my face and pulled off, and I was still talking. I can't believe I did that. But you know what? I got to thinking, we would do that over a natural situation that upset us, upset us for our children, we need to get that way about the devil attacking our children. We need to get that way. Ephesians 6 says this. Ephesians 6. <coughs> I believe it's Ephesians 6, 12. I'm not sure. No, no. Where is that? It is. It's just in Ephesians 6. You can go find it. It says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're wrestling for our families. Listen, the fight for your children, the fight for your marriage, the fight for your home, it is a wrestling match against the enemy. Some people just want to say, we wrestle not. And they just want to stop right there. I don't want to wrestle. We re no, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are called to wrestle, to, to wrestle in prayer for our families. You say, how do you wrestle against the enemy? Prayer is one of the greatest spiritual warfare tools that I know of. How do, when the enemy attacks, what he expects is that you're over there all down and out. You get a phone call from your prodigal. It's gotten worse. They've talked to you horrible. Or you've got a phone call about your bills and, and it's impossible. You can't even make it. It just looks like the enemy's just prevailing in so many things in your life. The enemy expects you to be depressed and over here offended and down and out. But no, you're over here in prayer. You're bombarding heaven. That's wrestling with the enemy. You're over here in prayer declaring, devil, you will not have my daughter. You will not have my son. You will not have my marriage. And you stand in prayer and you contend in the spirit. That, my friend, is what it is to wrestle, to wrestle against the enemy for the sake of your children. Let me tell you something. It's worth it. It is worth it. I want to tell you this too and give you a few little prayer strategies that actually I wrote in my book, Watching the Road. It's my book that's written on the prayer strategies that God has given us, given me on praying for impossible situations, especially my prodigal daughter when she was gone. These, these things are in there. But listen, I want you to, to listen. The second thing is to pray with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13 says this. I love this verse. He says, when you seek for me, you will find me when you seek for me with all of your heart. Now, there's, you know, sometimes we can pray little sweet little coffee prayers when we're just sitting there coffeeing with Jesus, and that's fine, and that's good, there's nothing wrong with it. But when you are in warfare for your family, you've got to learn, and I do too, more all the time. We need to learn to know what it is to pray with everything we have got in us. Pray till, it, till, you, till you engage every aspect of your being, your body, your soul, and your spirit. Pray until everything in you is praying with all of your heart. And God said, when you pray with all your heart, you'll find me. Another little thing I want to tell you, pray loud sometimes. I know that sounds odd, but sometimes I, you know, I don't feel like I need to encourage you on quiet prayers because we've got those down so well. 
But sometimes it's good to just get out and just go off by yourself. That's why you find me in the woods a lot. Just come out here. Go. If you don't have woods, go get in your car. <coughs> go find some place that you can be alone and nobody can hear you. There's somewhere you can go like that. Wait till everybody's at school and work and go in your house and just get where you can just lift your voice out loud. Pray loud. I know sometimes it may feel awkward at first. Do it anyway. Hebrews, go look this up for yourself. Hebrews, the fifth chapter and the seventh verse, especially in the New Living, it's beautiful. It says, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears. Jesus prayed loud sometimes. I just think it's good to engage everything you've got in prayer. Of course, we pray quiet. I love to pray quiet. I do often. But especially when I'm desperate, when, I, when my Lindsay was gone, honey, I prayed with everything I had in my being. I didn't care what anybody thought or what it took. One more thing. Be, be, be willing to just tell God every emotion and everything you feel with all of your heart. Don't hold anything back from him. When you're praying, even if you're praying loud or whatever with all your heart, just tell him how you feel and don't be afraid to do that. If you're angry, tell him you're angry. If you're hurt, tell him I'm hurt. If you're offended. I know the kind of places before where you just have to tell him, God, I hate him. I mean, he knows your heart anyway. He already knows that's how you feel. It's no surprise to him. He's just glad that, that you've come to him as the source of your healing. And I, I have found that when I express to him my feelings and I get them out of me, it empties that cup of pain in my heart. Even though if it fills back up again, I just go and empty it with him again. And it changes everything. I want to encourage you to pray in the spirit. Because there's sometimes, I love this, it's in Romans 8, 26 and 27, it says this, that there's times that we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit itself will make groanings, will make intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. When you don't know how to pray, pray in the Spirit. I love to pray in, the, in my heavenly language that God has given me when I receive the Holy Spirit. And you can have that too. Or you can pray because there's sometimes pain is so deep, there's no words for it to describe it, even in prayer. And that's why the writer of Romans was saying, when you don't know how to pray like that and you're hurting so deep, the Holy Spirit prays through you with groans that can't even be expressed in words. See, God even understands the groan of prayer. He understands the tears of prayer. So be willing to pray in the spirit. When you pray in the spirit, it's what the old timers always called, and I love it. It's praying until you pray through. What does that mean? It means you, you, you pray until you go from the flesh realm into the spirit realm. Martha Tennyson, a Pentecostal woman, I love preacher. She always said it like this. Praying through means you pray until you touch heaven. And you keep praying until heaven touches you. Honey, you'll know when you've broken through. It's like you enter into a realm where there is no time or space. You'll think you've been praying for 15 minutes. You look at the wall, it's been three hours and you don't even know it. You've been in the spirit realm. You enter into that place of the spirit. Oh, my friend, there's nothing like it. I want to encourage you. And you know what? If you don't know how to pray like that, ask the Lord to teach you. The disciples always went to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us to pray. We want to pray like you pray. And he did in many ways. Ask him, just say, Lord, I want to pray. Teach me to pray. Stir my heart with passionate prayer. Teach me how to pray out loud. Teach me how to pray in the spirit. Fill me with your spirit. And he'll do that. I want to encourage you today. Change your posture of prayer. Even from what's normal. Get up. I know when Lindsay was gone, I did it all. I stomped, prayed, crawled, ran. I did anything and everything because it didn't matter. Go to different places of prayer. I mean, you see me, I go out in the woods. Sometimes I'm on prayer mountain. Sometimes I'm on my couch, just sitting there alone. Sometimes I'm just laying on the floor. It doesn't matter. You find a place of prayer that breaks through for you and he will meet you there. I want to close my time by, by telling you this. This is what I feel strong, my dear friend. Listen, 
Don't waste another time. Don't waste another moment of time. There's too much at stake for your children. There's too much at stake for your family. There's too much at stake for you. Your prayers are making a difference. You say, well, Karen, what if I pray and nothing happens? Because I just feel like I've prayed in the past and nothing. What do you, what do, you do? You keep praying. I'll never forget my dear friend, Judy Jacobs. Her daughter was very, very sick. She was in the hospital. They had to have a miracle. Judy began fasting and praying, which is a powerful combination. She had fasted so many days that her husband was concerned about her. She was beginning to show just she was weak, but she was set and determined. In her, she had set her face like flint to see her daughter delivered. So her husband, Jamie, looked at her one day and he said, Judy, talking about her fasting, said, Judy, how long are you going to do this? And she looked at him with those warrior eyes that she has. She looked at her husband and she said, how long am I going to do this? Until. Then she said, what's the devil going to do with until? I love that. How long are we going to pray, my friend? Until. How long are you going to keep standing? Until. How long are we going to fast? Until. How long are you going to keep believing for this breakthrough? Until. Because what's the devil going to do with until? You are his worst nightmare. When you carry that kind of faith that says, I'm not giving up because I know my God is faithful to answer prayer. Lord, help my friend tonight. I pray for those that are believing, Lord. I pray for those that are in trouble. Father, I know you are a present help in the time of need. Just like you was for my Aunt May. Just like you have been for me. I pray for my brothers and my sisters that are watching me right now. For those that have loved ones that need healing. Those that are watching right now that need healing themselves. Those that are watching that have prodigal sons and daughters. God, we are asking you tonight to go get them. We loose them. We loose them from the bonds of the enemy. And we declare right now their heart is bound to the will of God and to the mind of Christ. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name for financial breakthrough. We thank you that you are our God and we lift up our eyes and we lift up our voices to you, God. We won't just talk about prayer. We're going to pray. We are dependent upon you and it is the greatest privilege we have, God, to be dependent upon you. You, God, are our everything. Oh, Father, I declare breakthrough for my friend tonight. I declare in the name of Jesus that this night, faith is stirred up in them to pray. Faith is stirred up in them to believe and faith is stirred in them to stand and believe until their breakthrough in Jesus name. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. He's with you. Comment below and let me, let me, let me know what, what God is saying to you. Let me know what needs you have so I can agree with you. And my friend, if my book will help you, I want to encourage you to go online. You can get it through watchingtheroad.com. You can get it through theramp.org or on Amazon. But all the proceeds for this book, 100%, goes to our ministry to help us reach young people for Jesus. I love you, my friend. I've gone over my time a little bit, but it's worth it. I believe your word tonight is that it's time to pray.